Hello. Uh, thank you guys to coming. Well, uh, I am Fernando Marino. I am blockchain product manager and self sovereign identity product manager at CPQD. Uh, I will tell you a little bit about CPQD. CPQD is an independent and a private resources, research, research center and development center in Brazil. We have almost 1,000 employees nowadays. And we act in markets like Telco. Actually, we came from Telco. We have 36 years old. Energy, industry, defense, financial, agribusiness, and technology and service providers. We are also a gov Brazilian government partner. Okay, that's our site in Campinas. Campinas is a city nearby from Sao Paulo. Uh, well, I'm here to talk nowadays uh, about the RBB. RBB is the Brazilian Blockchain Network. It's an initiative from the, uh, uh, the, uh, the development branch of Brazil, BNDS, to create a public infrastructure in Brazil to use it for the public sector. Okay, uh, first thoughts about the RBB. Uh, first of all, governance. We are talking about to create agreements for the constructions and operations of the network with the common standards in, to their members uh, in a public and private partnership. Second, network. Deployment of a common, secure, and interoperable technological infrastructure of blockchain for the public sector. Uh, infrastructure one that interoperates, for example, with the lock chain. Blockchain is the Latin and America Caribbean blockchain that we have in the South of American Caribbean government. Uh, services, governments, big techs and the startups develop applications of public interest. In. What it means? It means that uh, this blockchain is related to the uh, applications and the smart contracts for the public sector and the public interest. In. We will talk a little bit uh, uh, more about that. And uh, the foundation of that is the union uh, between the legislative, executive, judiciary, federal uh, government, state, uh, state government, and the municipal governments, uh, together with the private sector. We have, uh, uh, we have inspired this uh, action with another public permission at the network that we have, for example, Alastra in Spain, EBSI in the Europe, Lackchain in the South of American Caribbean, and actually Sovereign. Sovereign was uh, the base of the governance model that you are developing in Brazil, okay? Um, our purpose with RBB, first of all, innovation in the public interest, okay? Innovation in the public sector. Bring blockchain for uh, the public sector in Brazil. It's very important for we, you know, try this new technology and try the services that we can uh, offer for our Brazilian citizens. Trust. Uh, well, do you know nowadays in Brazil we have a lack of trust. Not in, not not even in Brazil actually, but uh, in the world uh, as a whole. But especially in Brazil. We are talking about a lack of trust, trust in, in terms of government, trust of uh, how this bank is used, the National Brazilian Development Bank, how it's being used to you know, support uh, initiatives and of the, the public and the private sector in Brazil. That's the mission of this bank. Uh, it's a public bank, actually. So uh, the idea of RBB is that anybody can check the RBB and anybody can audit the blockchain of RBB and verify if the uh, resources in these banks is uh, used uh, in the appropriate manner or not. What are we looking for? We are looking for, to, uh, first of all, first innovation in the use of DLT technology for public interest applications with particular emphasis on enabling the trust needed for anti-fraud and pro-transparency measures. Actually, it's, it's aligned with our account court in Brazil, the TCU. TCU is the court, the court of account uh, in Brazil that check the 
Brazilian uh, accounts and something like that. Uh, because the TCU uh, has a decision uh, in 2020 about regarding the pro transparency and the anti fraud uh, uh, acts in Brazil. Okay. Uh, the decree 10,032 on April uh, in 2020 has uh, in its eight goal the future. The future uh, uh, it, it talks about the future of public services and emerging technologies, and we have uh, uh, initiatives to develop at six research, development, and innovation projects with partners from the federal government, higher education institution, private sector, and the third sector. Uh, we have also to make at least nine data sets available through a blockchain solutions in the federal public administration by 2022, this year. Uh, so deploy a data experimentation lab with emerging technologies. Uh, that's the resolution uh, we are working with the uh, RBB network uh, right now. And that's the infrastructure of RBB. We have the RBB lab where we are trying applications and solutions using the, this infrastructure here. We are talking a little bit more about this infrastructure in the technical terms. Uh, we have in the federal uh, government, we have the PNDS, the bank that I took, uh, Dataprev. Dataprev is a, a, a company to uh, a lot of data from citizens and companies. Serpro, Serpro is a kind of a uh, public company for technology, uh, te te technology for, of formation in Brazil. State Executive, Prodengi and Prodest. Prodengi and Prodest is also a uh, technology company from the states, uh, the states of Minas Gerais in Brazil. R&D, and we are here. Uh, uh, RNP, RNP is the network of universities in Brazil. It's a network for the universities to share researches and to get connected with, e with each other, to uh, create infrastructures and uh, share labs and technologies, something like that. CPQD and the university, and the Catholic University uh, in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, international co uh, connections, we have uh, connected with the BID Lab, the blockchain, and the Federal Legislative, the TCU, the Court of Counts in Brazil. Okay, uh, applications, uh, now which kind of uh, applications of public interest in we are talking about here? Well, we have uh, a lot of interesting applications that you can use uh, RBB actually, for example, diploma issues. That's a, a problem, that, a, a issue that we have in, in everywhere. Uh, a public licitation to go pro transparency to people to uh, auditor the licitations of the Brazilian government. Tokens and public spending tracking. That's a very, very interesting case. Uh, actually, the BNDS started with this application here. They created the uh, BNDS token. Uh, so when BNDS was financing, uh, was uh, giving sourcing for our, our, an organization, public or not, uh, it gave this source using tokens. And then the organization has to spend the token with the, you know, uh, the companies that they are buying services or materials, and then these companies exchange those tokens with the uh, Brazilian currency real. So doing that, you, you can track uh, where the money is coming and who, 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 what the money is using for. Notarization and digital signature for organizations. At this time, uh, this application, the RBB is not looking for to create a solution for citizen identity. Okay, so it's not being used to uh, identify people. It's using to identify organizations and to uh, create services uh, for the, the organizations and to the public sector. But it's a public permission ad network. That's important to say, which means that everyone, anybody can uh, synchronize the, the ledger and uh, audit it and verify it. Okay, uh, in the technical stuff, what we are using, we are using Hyperledger Bessel. Uh, permission ad version of Ethereum, you know that. 
uh, you know, it's maintained by Hyperledger. Uh, the, the node, the nodes of the uh, Hyperledger base on interpret the Ethereum virtual machine I and mean, the level code. Uh, the consensus algorithm that you are using it's the proof of authority. Okay. Uh, now we are supporting around 30 percent of imposters in our network. Uh, no mining. Uh, I mean, uh, we, we don't have an, we, we don't have mining in our network, which means that. Uh, uh, and, and tokens actually are optional, so uh, we're not using at this time. Power consumption equivalent to normal servers, that's a good thing. Scalability for superior to public Ethereum, uh, but it is still limited nowadays. Uh, and instantiv finality. Uh, support, uh, this network nowadays supports private transactions, and maintain, uh, but we are not using it uh, at first. And to uh, deploy this network, you are using the scripts uh, based on lock chain. Okay, so we are very aligned with the lock chain, with the lock chain uh, in this network. Uh, uh, and lock chain is advancing in supplementary implementations for the network. So uh, uh, I, I will tell a little bit about what the PQD is researching uh, in the RBB, and you see that you are actually are looking what lock chain is is doing. Uh, in its own network. Well, uh, technical as our technical solutions based on elections, as I told, we have the boot node. They are responsible for connecting new nodes. Uh, the organizations responsible for the node must electronically sign the terms of use for the network. The, the, also, we have the validator nodes. They are responsible to connect the new nodes. The orgs responsible for the node must electronically sign. This is a term. This term here. It's a kind of uh, governance term, but we are not calling it as a governance term for uh, political and bureaucracy regions. We are calling it as a, a, a technical agreement among the TCU and the BNDS. And the participating, we are signing this term as well. But in these terms, we are describing the, uh, the base of the principles of governance of this network. Okay? The right notes, the right notes, this one here, they uh, sign and, and endorse transactions to the ledger. And the observer notes, they can only read the information registered as on the network. And they can be used by the citizens and organizations to audit this network as well. Uh, well, we have a liability in the right regular notes, and it's uh, described in these terms because, you know, uh, they are writing in the blockchain, in the ledger, so there's a, a little bit against what they are doing in this network. Okay, uh, this is the agreement that I told you, uh, the TCA, Technology Cooperation Agreement. Uh, there is no transfer of funds between BMDS and TCU. Uh, they are not involving money. Uh, and other ones are joining us. Uh, the patrons, uh, uh, the 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 the, uh, the main parts in this uh, TC uh, the, this agreement, the BMDS and TCU, they have uh, rights to veto. Uh, associated participants in the consensus with validators and boots, they are uh, as the PQDR uh, is, uh, they have the right to vote in the governance. Partners execute use cases, so they have writers. They are entitled to a voice in the governance. In the future, writers will not enter in the settlement. Uh, I mean, uh, in the future, writers, will, uh, it will not be necessary for them to sign the technical agreement. Uh, TCA uh, is linked as a possible because the idea here is not to create the final governance model because we're learning with the public sector. So it's linked as possible. Uh, most decisions are in governance and are included in the regulations. And the governance and regulations of the network are provided for the TCA document. Okay, uh, here I think it's uh, a slide about challenges that we have. First of all, financial sustainability. Uh, I mean, uh, a few organizations, as you saw, is running this node here. So, uh, how they are being remunerated? 
how can how they are able to be remunerated uh, uh, with the public sector? It's a, a, a leader. We, we, we are we are not sure about how we will sustain this network uh, in the long term. We are trying and uh, creating sites how to do that in the long terms. Blockchain uh, rights by network site. For example, in the blockchain, writers buy they buy network access, right? Uh, blockchain operates the network and blockchain is remunerated for these payments. Uh, validators also are paid, so we have a business model for validators here. Uh, we don't have it nowadays in RBB, we are studying how to incentivize validators to still validating the, the ledger. RBB, uh, Reducing this arrangement is a legal innovation that can delay the project and make it unfeasible. <laughs> what it means? It means if you, we started to discuss in the arrangement how to, we, we do the financial sustainability of the RBB, we can not get an arrangement with the government, okay? So because of that we're not discussing it. Initially, uh, participants can individually provide the final services having their own writer, so for example, CPQD build a solution using RP, a solution that is, you know, uh, of a public interest in and uh, also everything that I told you before, <coughs> then we can uh, provide these services for the, the organizations and receive for that. <coughs> or access via other writers. We can use another writer, for example, Bucky Hill, Bucky Hill, the university. The university, they don't have writers, they can use, for example, the writer from CPQD. Uh, joint activities for operation and evolutions of the network will have to take place collaboratively. Uh, IDB is open to possible arrangements that make possible a scenario more similar like chain in the medium term. The BNGS is open. Okay, uh, next steps. Network starts with a pilot in 2022. Uh, DC participants only use cases. What means that nowadays only the participants or only the participants can run their use cases. Uh, RNP is developing a digital diploma use case development for Mac. Mac is the Brazilian Education Ministry. Uh, Bookie Hill is creating a service to signatures or digital signatures for organizations called the subscriber BR. CPQD is studying the GIG trusted register based on the blockchain GIG register. SAA for pilots, network and data security with a high level of trust. Uh, next step, uh, looking for a full prediction. New user cases from a OTC participants, I mean, uh, another participants that like to use the RBB. Uh, uh, you are building a new kind of term of use. It's uh, a similar instrument, but it's uh, uh, it's easier to sign and to get in the network. Uh, provision services, provision of the services by participants to non-participants. I mean, uh, the participants of the TCA can provision services for another companies. Looking for a typical production SLA. Okay, uh, I think I was fast here in my presentation because we got delayed regarding the issue on my monitors. I have a minute for a few questions.